Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing pain and analgesic drugs. Okay, right. Uh, so we're now going to discuss uh, two final classes of drugs that are used to treat uh, neuropathic pain. Okay, and the two that we're going to discuss are the tricyclic antidepressants, which for short are abbreviated down to the TCAs. So tricyclic antidepressants, okay, or for short, whoops, uh, depressants, or for short, the TCAs. And then also uh, the SNRIs, okay, which stands for the serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors. Okay, so this stands for serotonin, that's the S, okay, and then it's and noradrenaline, which I'll just abbreviate down to NA, uh, and then reuptake inhibitors, okay, reuptake inhibitors. And these drugs are usually used to treat depression, okay? And the way that they believe to work to help treat uh, neuropathic pain is by potentiating the signaling that comes down from the locus ceruleus neurons and the nucleus raphae magnus neurons. Okay, so remember when we were discussing that endogenous way of moderating pain, this endogenous system, we saw that the locus ceruleus neurons, which release noradrenaline, and the uh, nucleus raphae magnus neurons, which release serotonin, are going to be activating these uh, enkephalin-containing interneurons in lamina 2 of the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, and that these neurons release enkephalins onto these synapses between primary nociceptive afferents and secondary um, spinophalanic projection neurons and weaken that synapse, effectively closing the gate, basically. So if we can potentiate the activity of uh, these locus ceruleus neurons and these nucleus raphae magnus neurons, then the idea that is that we can close this gate here, okay, and this is going to be useful if we've got damage to the peripheral uh, primary nociceptive afferents that is causing them to fire spontaneously because then we're going to be able to close that gate there, okay? So let me just describe then how uh, these two classes of drugs then can potentiate that signaling. So let's start with the tricyclic antidepressants, the TCAs. So the tricyclic antidepressants work by blocking the norepinephrine transporter. Okay, so let me just show this. Let's say that this is the axon terminal of one of those neurons coming down from the locus ceruleus. Okay, so this has its cell body up in the locus ceruleus, and it's going to release noradrenaline onto uh, that um, enkephalin-containing interneuron in lamina 2 of the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. Well, basically, to terminate the noradrenaline signal, there is a transporter on the presynaptic membrane coloured in blue here, which is called NET for short, okay, which stands for the norepinephrine transporter, so this is called the norepinephrine, so that's another uh, name for noradrenaline, so in the States, noradrenaline is called norepinephrine, okay, so the NE is for norepinephrine, and then the T is for transporter. Okay, and this basically is responsible for reabsorbing the noradrenaline in the synaptic cleft back into the cytoplasm of the axon terminal and terminating that signaling from the locus ceruleus neuron to the enkephalin containing interneuron. Okay, basically the tricyclic antidepressants, the TCAs, they all inhibit this norepinephrine transporter, and therefore the noradrenaline is going to remain in the synaptic cleft for much longer. You're going to stimulate those um, enkephalin-containing interneurons much more, okay, and therefore you're going to get much more blockage of that gate between the primary nociceptive afferents and the second-order uh, spinophalanic projection neurons. Okay, so let me give you some examples of tricyclic antidepressants. Okay, so some examples include the drug amitriptyline. Okay, so amitriptyline. Okay, uh, also the drug nortriptyline. Okay, and also desipramine. So nortriptyline, and finally another example is desipramine. 
Okay, so those drugs all block the norepinephrine transporter and therefore potentiate the signaling between the locus ceruleus and these enkephalin-containing interneurons in Rex said laminate 2 of the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and thus potentiate this block uh, of uh, that gate between the primary neurons and the secondary neurons. Okay, right. The SNRIs is a very similar concept, but these do more than just block the norepinephrine transporter. They also block the equivalent thing for the serotonergic neurons coming down from the nucleus Raphae magnus. Okay, so again, these neurons are going to be releasing serotonin 5-HT onto the enkephalin-containing interneurons. And to terminate that signaling, there is a transporter that reabsorbs the serotonin known as the CERT. Okay, which stands for serotonin reuptake transporter. So the SE is for, sorry, the S, yes, the SE is for serotonin. Okay, the R is for reuptake. Okay, and then the T is for transporter. Okay, and this serotonin reuptake transporter um, is going to retransport the serotonin molecules into the cytoplasm of that axon terminal here. Okay, so that's it there. For short, it's called the CERT, and its full name is over here. Okay, so serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors are going to block both the norepinephrine transporter and the serotonin reuptake transporter, and therefore they're going to increase both the noradrenergic signaling and the serotonergic signaling onto these enkephalin-containing um, interneurons, and therefore they're going to potentiate the activity of those uh, enkephalin-containing interneurons, and therefore potentiate the block uh, of the gate, again, between the primary and secondary uh, pain neurons. Okay, so let me give you an example then of a selective neuro sorry, a serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor. An example, the main example, is the drug venlafaxine. Okay, now something that's worth mentioning is that the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, the SSRIs, which are one of the first line treatments for depression and which include the famous drug Prozac or fluoxetine as its official name is, okay, these are ineffective at treating neuropathic pain. So blocking the serotonin reuptake transporter alone, okay, which is what these SSRIs do. They don't block the norepinephrine transporter, just the serotonin reuptake transporter. Okay, uh, If you just block that, it doesn't seem to be enough to uh, block the neuropathic pain. Okay, So they are not used to treat neuropathic pain. It's the tricyclic antidepressants and the, select, uh, sorry, the serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors, uh, the SNRIs that are used. Okay, right. Uh, so, one final thing to say is that the opiates are uh, classically viewed as not working in neuropathic pain. Okay, so the classical textbook answer is that opiates are not used to treat neuropathic pain because for some reason that people don't understand, they don't work. Okay, and this seems to be contradictory because we've just said that these drugs work by increasing the action of the enkephalins in blocking the gate. But then if blocking the gate is how to stop the neuropathic pain coming from these damaged uh, peripheral nociceptive neurons, uh, then why wouldn't the opiates work, which do exactly that? Okay, um, it was a mystery, but now more recent data is saying that actually the opiates do work to treat neuropathic pain if you give them at high enough doses. Okay, uh, but currently opiates are not clinically used to treat neuropathic pain, although maybe in the future they will be if those high doses are actually safe to give. Okay, so that now concludes our discussion of pain and analgesic drugs.